Welcome to Electron Online. In some previous videos, we looked at the central angle of a circle. Now we're going to look at what we call the inscribed angle of a circle. Now the inscribed angle has its vertex at the edge of the circle. Remember, for a central angle, the vertex was at the center of the circle. So these are called inscribed angles. Again, we have two points on the circle, A and B. You can see that the angle here is associated with the arc from A to B in all three cases. Notice in this case that the center point of the circle is between the two lines connecting C to A and C to B. Here, one of the lines is, goes through the central point on the circle, or the center of the circle, and here the center of the circle is not in between the two lines from C to A and C to B. In all cases, they're still called inscribed angles. Now, how is an inscribed angle related to the central angle? Now, if we draw it very carefully here, here we have what we call a central angle. The vertex is at the center of the circle. Here is an inscribed angle. And notice if I draw a line, a dashed line, from the edge of the circle through the vertex of the central angle and through the vertex of the inscribed angle, you can see that that line divides both angles in exactly two equal parts. So this is what we call the angle bisector for both angles. Also notice that the distance from the center to the edge of the circle here, and from the distance from the vertex here, which is on the other side of the circle, to the edge of the circle there, this distance is exactly twice this distance. So it seems to make sense when you start comparing the angles, angle 1 and angle 2, that you would think that angle 2 must be half the size of angle 1 because the distance from there to there is twice as far. And that is indeed the case. This angle is half this angle. We can write that here. If the measure of angle 1 is 60 degrees, then the measure of angle 2 must be half that and therefore only 30 degrees. But is that the case for other situations where we cannot dry, draw a, a bisector? What is, the, what is the angle 2 here relative to angle 1? Is that also half the size of angle 1? What if we draw it like this? What if we draw it like this? Can we say that the measure of angle 2 is half the measure of angle 1? Because in all cases, the two lines that make up the angle do come to the same points of the circle A and B. And it turns out the answer is yes. It doesn't matter where the position of the vertex is, as long as it's on the edge of the circle, where the two points of the lines come to the circle on the other side, we can always say that the measure of angle 2, that's the angle associated with the inscribed angle, is equal to one half the measure of the arc made from the two points where the two lines meet the circle on the other side. So in other words, the measure of the angle is equal to one half the measure of the arc on the other side of the circle. Regardless of where that is, you can take your points A and B anywhere you want, and that measure, the measure of the angle, will always be exactly half the measure of the arc. And so the answer is yes, in each of the cases, the measure of angle 2 here will be half measure angle 1, measure of angle 2 will be half measure angle 1, measure of angle 2 here will be half of measure angle 1. And that's a very powerful theorem. We haven't proven it yet, we'll do that in a later video, but just knowing how to utilize that will make it very easy to come up with finding angles in situations that otherwise would be very difficult to find. And we'll show you an example of that in the next video.